Hello, in this video I'll show you how to run a simple regression analysis. As you recall, simple regression means we use one x variable and uh, we have one response variable. Uh, the data I have uh, for the example represents ice cream sales over a period of 20 days. This, the data is made up, uh, however it may represent a uh, chain of grocery stores uh, over a period of 20 days in the summer, uh, we record ice cream sales in hundreds of dollars in temperature and uh, Fahrenheit. Um, okay, so the first thing I like to do with uh, uh, looking at a relationship between two variables is to make a scatter plot. Now this is a time series data technically, but we'll ignore time because we want to look at the relationship between temperature and sales. So I'm going to make a scatter plot first out of the data for temperature and sales. Remember in Excel, the x variable has to be to the left of your y variable when you're making a scatter plot. So go insert, scatter, there we go, and I'll need to do some cleaning up. Okay, let's get rid of this legend, click on the grid lines, hit the delete key, Let's uh, rescale the x-axis to start at 60 and end at 95. I happen to know that's the min and max of the data. Right-click on the x-axis, format axis, uh, start at 60, go to 95. Let's go up by 5 degree increments, press OK. Y-axis, let's uh, start at 15 and go to 35. Right-click, format axis. 15 to 35 by increments of 5. Okay, let's uh, add axis labels, layout, axis titles, horizontal, below, let's say temperature and uh, Fahrenheit. Actually, these are supposed to be high temperatures of the day. I'll call it high temp. And then our y axis. Let's call this um, sales, hundreds of dollars. Okay, um, let's make the points white circles. Right click on the points, format data series, options built in. Let's make them circles, fill, let's say solid fill. I'll make it a light gray marker line color, solid. Uh, black outline. Okay, I'll uh, add a border on the inside part. Right click, format plot area, border, solid. Let's make it medium gray to match this other part of the border. Outside border, I like to get rid of it. Right click, format chart area, border color, no line. Okay, almost done. I want to squeeze the graph so that the y-axis is about the same length as the x-axis. Okay, now um, I can add a trend line to the scatter of points and see the regression line. Right-click anywhere on the points. Add trend line. Uh, linear is already checked. That's what we want. And down here, see where it says display the equation on the chart. Let's check that. And also let's display r-squared. Close. Okay, so I have uh, this notation here is my least squares regression equation. I'm going to clean it up a little bit to correspond to uh, using the variable labels. So uh, y is really sales. I'll say sales dash hat to indicate it's the fitted y value. I like to put the uh, <laughs> the intercept first followed by the slope, and I'll cut off a few decimal places here, uh, times temp at r squared 74.1%, just making it a little bit cleaner. Okay, and then if you want, you could uh, maybe draw a line, a little arrow to the line, go insert shape, uh, squiggly arrow and you can 
say, yeah, that represents that equation. Okay, so from this equation, I see the intercept is negative 8.43, and that has no uh, physical interpretation, obviously, because uh, we don't have negative sales, but that's a, an extrapolation anyway, because that uh, when temperature is zero, uh, that is outside the range of data we've collected, so that would not be a good prediction for ice cream sales when temperature is zero. Uh, however, we still need the intercept so that we could make predictions within the range of data we have collected. The slope coefficient, 0.433, tells us that for each uh, one degree higher the high temperature is for the day, we expect sales to be higher by $0.433 or $43.30. Okay, let me uh, run the regression now, get the regression output. We would like to know if this relationship is significant or not. Clearly, the relationship looks strong, uh, strong and linear. Um, there's a couple of weird points. This point would be an outlier. This point would be a high leverage point. But let's run the regression. Go data, data analysis, regression, press OK. Input the Y range, which is sales. Input X range, which is temperature. Let's check labels in the first row, because I've included this in the input Y and X range. Um, under confidence level, let's check that and change that to 90. Under output range, let's check that and say um, like L4. And we won't do anything with this stuff yet. Let's press OK. OK, so there's our regression output, and it looks a little messy. So let's take a minute or two to clean this up. First of all, I, I like to stretch out the... Uh, first column to like a width of 12 and then I'm going to abbreviate some of these stats because otherwise they'd be hidden. I'm just getting rid of some of the extra notation. In this ANOVA table, this is really the p-value that I, uh, Excel calls it significance f. Let's um, abbreviate some more of these labels. Uh, right here, I can get rid of the 0, 0.0 part in both of these upper and lower bounds. And let's format all cells to three decimal places. Home. And then I do the quick uh, format icon. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And let's highlight all these columns and double click and it formats to the right width for us. So now we can more clearly see what's going on with the data. Uh, I'm going to write out the regression equation based on what I see in this regression output. So I see the coefficients, the intercept and the slope is right there, which matches what I got from that trend line before. So I'm going to write sales hat is equal to negative 8.431 plus 0 0.433 times temp. And I think I'll bold, fa bold face that. OK. So uh, a few other stats that we're familiar with at this point. R squared, 74.1% uh, of the variability in sales is explained by high temperature for the day. Uh, standard error is the same thing as our residual standard deviation. This represents the typical deviation between the actual sales values and what our model uh, predicted them to be. So in this case, it's $232.50 is my typical miss. Uh, the author calls this the typical fluctuation around the regression line, $232.50. Um, right here, we just got into this a little bit so far in class, but Right here, this p-value for the slope coefficient is significant, so that means we do believe there is a real relationship between sales and temperature. And in fact, since our data came out positive, positive slope, we believe that higher temperatures is associated with higher ice cream sales. 
Okay, I'm going to end this video at this point, and we'll do some more with simple regression in another video. Thank you.